Praise the Lord, Tree of Life family. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. What a blessing it is to be a part of God's family. We thank you all for tuning in tonight. On the behalf of our pastor, Joe Urson, we want to welcome you to our midweek uh, Bible study. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, we appreciate you. I love you. Uh, and prayfully, you are maintaining your social distancing, uh, wearing your mask, and and uh, sheltering in place in quarantine. I just had to pull this one mask out, Brother Bill Durst, this is for you. I just had to show this. Uh, uh, being quarantined and doing your sanitizing and, and all of those things, we're certainly grateful for you all uh, joining us tonight. Uh, if you are visiting worship centers in this city and you do not have a church home, we invite you to join us on Sunday mornings here at 6477 Cooper Road at 930 and or our second service at, at 1130. Uh, I think you will be blessed uh, either one that you attend. We look forward to meeting you and greeting you in the name of Jesus. I want to direct your attention tonight uh, to the book of Luke. We're going to go to Luke chapter four. So if you have your Bibles, if you want to turn there with me to Luke chapter four, and we're gonna start reading at verse 14. Luke chapter four, and we're gonna read at, begin at verse 14. And the word of the Lord reads, and Jesus returned in the power of the spirit into Galilee, where he went out, uh, where there went out a fame of him through all the regions round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all, and he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and as it was his custom, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered him, uh, delivered him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found, notice this right here, he found, so he's looking for something very specifically, and he found, the Bible tells us, the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance of the captive and recovering of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised and to teach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them were in the synagogue. All them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. And all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out, out of his mouth, of these gracious words. We're going to talk tonight just briefly, and we're not going to get uh, famous last words. We're not going to be too long. Famous last words. We're not going to be too long. But we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about the kingdom. Let's go before the Lord in prayer now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your love. We thank you, Father, for your might. We thank you for being our God, being our strength, being our salvation. We thank you, Father, for God creating all things. We thank you for ordering our steps, Father. We thank you for your might, your authority, your power. Father, we worship you and we give you all the praise, Father, and all the glory. Father, we ask that you would visit us tonight, Father, as we, Father, break the bread of life, Father. We pray, Lord God, that you would, Father, visit every home, Father, visit, Lord God, Every, every, every phone, every, every, every television, Father, every station where this is being received. We pray now, Father, for clarity and we pray for understanding. And we ask your hand to be upon us now. And everyone said in Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. In my times of travel, throughout the military certainly, but mostly the kingdom of God, various churches and things like that, uh, we've heard statements of laborers, men and women of God who have served the kingdom of God. We've heard them make statements uh, and compliment uh, many leaders uh, that have impacted their lives and have impacted their ministry. Uh, whether it was a, an intercessor that somebody had in a life that, that taught them how to invest time, taught them how to pray and spent time with them, showing the value of spending time with the Lord. Or it was a church mother who, who taught us or taught mothers how to pray for the children. And even in some cases, fathers, how to, how to be uh, watchers over their children. Uh, or maybe it was that deacon or elder that uh, taught you through hands-on experience uh, what it's like to live a disciple life, live a Christ-centered life. Uh, some of us have even attributed <clears throat> their love 
for teaching to a, to a Sunday school teacher or a college professor who have inspired them in learning comprehension, returning nuggets, retaining nuggets of knowledge uh, uh, which they are, are now living, which they are now living. But whether it was that Sunday school teacher, whether it was that elder, that deacon, whether it was uh, that man or woman of God that we, we so graciously honor, that we, we absolutely give credit to for, for who we have become as individual uh, followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, we would all have that statement to make if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, where would we be? We thank God for that teacher, that elder, that church mother. We thank God for them. But if it, if it had not been for the cross, glory, if it had not been for the cross, none of us would be teachers, none of us would be preachers, none of us would be, be leaders the way that we are if it had not, had not been, been for the cross. I love the example that, that many of our leaders have, have taken, many of the hands-on example that our leaders have taken in helping us to really become all that God has designed for us to become. I, I had one particular man of God, uh, I call him my father in the gospel, and that is our my bishop, Gary Ellis, uh, there at the Abundant Life Outreach Center in Clarksville, Tennessee. I remember uh, my time as a new convert, uh, and we were, you know, fresh out the out the womb, still still playing in the cradle. But I remember Pastor coming to uh, our job various times, and he would get us together, and we would go to different spots around uh, Fort Campbell, where, where I was stationed at the time. And he would he would show us how to start a Christ-centered conversation. He would show us how to how to initiate talking to people about the Lord. He would show us and and demonstrate to our lives or in our lives how to live with kingdom authority. Glory, glory, how to live with kingdom authority. Uh, there are many of us, many men and women of God that have, have done that for us. Amen. I, re I remember a time, um, San Antonio, Texas, when I was stationed there, and it was in, oh, glory, 95, somewhere, 95. Uh, and there was their pastor and a bishop now, Bishop James Jackson. I don't know why he did it, but I remember him taking me with him as he did marital counseling. Uh, I'm a young single soldier in the barracks and, and just on fire trying to lift a God the right way. And uh, he just said, man, let's, let's go. I want to take you with me. But he took me, and he, as, as leaders do, we take you hand by hand, uh, and we should, and we, we teach you some of the fundamental truths, some of the fundamental methods and manners of how to, how to interact with people and and man our own pastor our own pastor has 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 taught me how to transition Bible study several years ago uh, he had me transition he transitioned me into a Bible study that he was teaching and uh, helped me to really understand this is how you do it you know he and this happened before but he didn't say just Fazel, I need you to go here and teach this Bible study but but we went hand in hand as he was teaching a lesson and he transitioned me into that I, I love the fact that that these leaders these men and women of God they they exemplify uh, what it was like to live uh, a kingdom life, a kingdom life. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about tonight the, the kingdom life. They, they showed us how to live the kingdom life, not by saying go knock that door, not by saying go do this or go do that, but they exemplify what it was like to live with a Christ-centered focus, to live with a Christ-centered centered purpose. The Bible tells us in Luke chapter Four, verse 43 through 44, that Jesus did this. Jesus made this statement and he said unto them, I must preach the kingdom of God. Here's what we're talking. He says, I must preach the kingdom of God. On another occasion in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, Jesus said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, and these things shall be added unto you. So when we're talking about the kingdom, we're speaking of the, the rule of the king over all the earth. I want you to know that when we're talking about the kingdom, we're speaking of the rule of the king over all the earth. Let's put this into perspective. That is a rule over, over, over sicknesses, glory. That, it is, that is his rule over diseases. That is his rule over addictions. I feel the Lord right now. That it is rule over brokenness. 
Glory to God. That is his rule over anything that ails humanity. That is his rule and authority that is in the earth. Now, we're not just randomly throwing words out there. Jesus demonstrated this in the life that he lived, showing us that we have that same authority to live an effective kingdom centered living up, up on this earth. My, 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 my. Hmm. Glory. Brother Seth is just here, but I'm about to have some church up in here right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Bible tells us in Psalms uh, 103, verse 19, it says, The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. This is Psalms 103 and 119. Uh, Psalms 47 and verse 2, it tells us this. It says, For the Lord most high is terrible. He is a great king over, everybody say, over all the earth over all the earth. I, I know if, if, if you're thinking like me, and I, I pray that, that you are uh, in this regard, because we're all thinking like the Lord, not me, but we're all thinking like the Lord. We're looking at our communities and we're, we're looking at our neighbors and those that may not have a relationship with God or those that may not know the Lord as their savior, those that have never experienced a born again, uh, experienced a promise of, of the Holy Spirit and may have never had their sins remitted. And we're looking out in our communities, we're looking out upon our world and we're wondering Lord, how can I reach them? How can I be effective, Father? Because kingdom living is something, Father, that you brought me into the kingdom to do. Let me say that again. Kingdom living is something that the Lord brought us into the kingdom to do. That means this here, that I have an influence by the power of his spirit in my community. I have an influence by the power of his spirit on my job. I have an influence by the power of the spirit throughout every region of my world, every region that I cycle into, every region or area that I travel into, I have influence by, by the power of the spirit. So when we're speaking of living a kingdom life, we're realizing and stating that God, this is your realm. We're stating, God, this is, is your rule. And there's, there's nothing, Father, that you cannot do in this area. This is interesting to me because when I look at some of the problems, when I look at some of the challenges, certainly that we have uh, as a nation and, and, and some of the things that we are experiencing that, that are not so favorable, I would certainly say this, that God has rule over that. He has rule over that. I think our challenge and, and our focus should be not upon the problem, but upon the solution. Not upon the problem, but upon the solution. I remember a song some time ago, uh, and I won't try to sing it right now, but it said, Jesus is the answer. If I had a keyboard here, I might finish that. But Jesus is the answer for, for this world today. The Bible tells us also in Daniel chapter 4, verse, verse 17, it tells us this. It says that the most high ruleth in the kingdom's of men, the most high ruleth. That word rule means he has power over. Power over what? Power over every kingdom. Power over the celestial. Power over this, this natural. Power over the physical. Power over the emotion. He has power over all the kingdoms of men. When we speak of kingdom, we're defining the rule. We're defining the, the authority, the custom, the principles, and the laws. These are the expectations that God has for his subjects and his citizens or the citizens of the kingdom. Our rights, our entitlements, our, our, our privileges. In uh, uh, one application, the Bible tells us it is the earnest of our, of our inheritance. Let's put this in another perspective. When we're talking, talking about the kingdom, Jesus says something very specifically in Matthew chapter 7. Turn it with me now, Matthew chapter 7. And we're going to begin reading probably down around, probably down around verse, verse 24, verse 24. I'm going to actually, let's go back up to verse 21. We'll start there. Uh, I don't want to miss a lot of the, the nuggets that are in here. Here's what verse 21, it says, it says, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now, when you read in scripture, when you see the kingdom of heaven and you read in scripture, you see the kingdom of God, those are synonymous terms. They both mean the same thing, the rule, the, the authority of God, the rule and the authority of God. Uh, and the scripture goes on to say, uh, 
but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. So not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, is going to enter in, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Watch this now, and I won't tackle a lot of it uh, that's bundled up in the scripture. I want to get to the point uh, for our lesson tonight on kingdom living. He says, many will say unto me in that day, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And thy name cast out devils, and thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, I got to pause right there for a second. I'm not going to tackle everything, but, but his sayings is referring to his word. It's not the cliches that glory we hear out in Christianity. It's, it's not those familiar sayings. It's, it's not those popular things, name it, you know, blab it and grab it and, and things like that. You know, God's got, you know, a, a, a blessing with my name on it. He certainly does. But that's a cliche. That's a cliche. I, I remember some time ago speaking with a friend of mine. You know, we were discussing God's promises and, and we were comparing uh, a testimony that, that somebody had. And this particular testimony, uh, this was a lady that, that is very widely used within Christianity and, and throughout our nation. And this particular person had said that God said he's going to give her a car, told her where to go to get the car, told her what dealership to go to, told her what day to go there. Well, she went there to that dealership. She went on the day that God set for her to go. Uh, and lo and behold, you know, uh, the dealership gave this woman a guy a car, you know, and said, and so we were talking, a friend of mine, we were talking and, you know, she said, well, if God did it for her, God can do it for me. Well, you know, I said, well, you know, I said, let's put that into perspective. Let's take a real look at this right here, because that was the will of God for her. That may not be the will of God for you. See, many of us like to take these principles or take these promises that, that, or blessings that somebody has received, and we like to make it all applicable for, for our lives. You know, like, man, I, I love to be a millionaire. Lord, speak to me. Whisper to me. Lord, whisper to somebody's heart, you know. But that may not be the will of God for my life. Woo, glory. Because if we all pause for just a moment and, and be honest with one another, I'd rather make heaven than be a millionaire. Glory. Glory. I'd rather drive the car that I'm driving right now than, than to be in something that, that I may not even be able to afford the insurance on or be in something that's going to cause me to trip emotionally and, and miss, out on, miss out on something that God has in store for me. So that was the will of God for her life, but it may not be the will of God for mine, and it may not be the will of God for yours. I'm helping somebody right now. So he says, therefore, whosoever hears these sayings of mine and do them, I will liken to him a wise man which built his house upon the rock. And the rains descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not for it was founded upon what? It was founded upon that rock, it was founded upon his sayings. And then he went on to say this here. He says, but and everyone that, that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, will build his house upon the sand. The rains ascended, the floods came, the winds blew upon it, blew and beat upon the house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Verse 28 says this, And it came to pass, when Jesus had entered the sand, the people were astonished at his doctrine. Watch this now and don't miss it. This is what separates everything about us within Christianity. It's not the cliches. It's not the popular sayings. It's not those statements that make us feel good. But this is what separates all of us when it comes to living a kingdom life. This is what he says here. For he taught them as one having authority. He taught them as one having authority and not as as the scribes and not as those rulers of that day. Can I, can I tell you this right here? I, I'm, I'm starting to feel, if, if this was Sunday, I would say I'm starting to feel my help coming. So let me just say I'm starting to feel my help coming because many times we are challenged in living a kingdom life. It, it, in that, when there is compromise in our spirit, there's often compromise in the words that we're speaking. Let me say that again. When there is compromise in our spirit, it's often compromise in the words that we are speaking. So instead of leaning on God and not our own, un own understanding, we lean on our own understanding instead of trusting in the word of God and releasing from us, releasing from the knowledge of the word of God, releasing from our teaching, the thing that's going to bless the person 
or bless the home or bless the situation that we're ministering into. So we have to understand there is power in teaching with the authority of the word of God. What did he tell us in the beginning? It was his sayings. It was his word. It was his teaching. He, he told us that this, this is what's going to make the difference. Can, can I tell you, glory to God, I feel it right now. Can I tell you the thing that's going to get that person off of alcohol? It's going to be the authority of the word of the Lord operating in that person's life. Can I tell you the thing that's going to get that person delivered from addictions? Hear me now, glory. It is the authority of the word of God operating in, in their lives. Come on now. Can I tell you the thing that's going to mend a broken heart? Can I tell you the thing that's going to mend a mind? Can I tell you the thing that's going to mend our society? Glory. It is the authority of the word of God operating in our society, operating in our, in our, in our communities. So authority is defined as the power, as the jurisdiction, as the right, the privilege, uh, and the and the influence or the, the control. Webster defines authority as this, power to influence, command, opinion, or behavior, the power or right to enforce, the power or right to enforce. I love something that I, I read in, in the book of Luke preparing for our, our lesson tonight. So turn with me, if you will, to Luke chapter 10, and we're going to begin at verse one. Luke chapter 10, verse one, say amen when you have it. <laughs> Elbow the person next to you, let them know that you got it. And here's what it says, <clears throat> verse one. He says, after these things, the Lord appointed 70 also. And he sent them two and two before his face into every city and place. You know, I, I, I have to, I, I've got to be just who I am and be honest with you, you know. Um, my Lord, my Lord, he sent them two by two into every city and to every place. Can I tell you, there are some places the Lord wants us to go. It's, it's, it's quiet. It's quiet. It's OK. It's OK to be quiet because a lot of times we're apprehensive. But but Jesus sent them to every city and to every place. Some of those places were very, very comfortable, very convenient. Some of those places were very, very favor favorable, very, very well known. But, but some of those places were, were, were places that you probably wouldn't want to go. Some of those places were, were difficulties. Some of those places were challenges. I remember one part in the scripture, the Bible tells us that Jesus got on a boat, crossed the sea, crossed the lake, and, and then ended up in the tombs there. And there was a, a man that was in need but it was a man that everybody else was afraid of. It was, it was a man that, that nobody could control. It was a man that was bound by Satan, bound by legions of devils. But it was a place that, that Jesus went. It was a place that Jesus, that Jesus went. Please hear me today. Please hear me today. I see you, Brother Jordan. I see you, Brother Jordan. Brother David Jordan and Brother Brandon, I see you right now. There are places that Jesus went. Glory to God. Hallelujah, that Jesus wants us to go. There are places and situations that Jesus went into, hear me now, that Jesus wants us to go. There are situations that Jesus tackled that everybody else was afraid of. There are situations that Jesus dealt with that everybody turned away from. But he wants us, he wants us to go. He wants us to go, watch this now, watch this now, not because we're going to make the difference, but because he's going to make the difference. Not because we're going to make the change, but because he, ah, glory, he's the one that's going to make the change. But he sent them into every city, into every place, whether he himself would come. Therefore said he unto them, the harvest is, is great, but the laborers are few. Pray you therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send for the laborers, laborers into the harvest that he was sent for labor sent through the harvest. Here's the thing, he sent them out two by two and he sent them to accomplish something. He sent them to accomplish something. One of the things that, that we teach in, in the ministry when it comes to evangelism, 
uh, 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 home Bible studies and ministering to people, we, we tell them that, that you, first of all, let me just say this, you have to have a prayer life. You're not going to live a kingdom life without having a prayer life. What was that, Echo? No, you have to live a kingdom life. You're not going to have a kingdom life without having a, a prayer life. Let me repeat that. That's, that's worth being repeated. You're not going to live a kingdom life if you do not have, if you do not have a prayer life. But he, he sent them out there and he sent them out there with, with an expectation because he knew what he would do when he got there. And here's what's interesting there, there in the book of Luke. Uh, as we continue to work through the story, I want you to drop down to uh, uh, look at verse three. It says, go your way as I send you forth as lambs among wolves. And then I want you to drop down. That was verse three. Drop down to verse seven. Uh, verse seven, it says this. And in that same house remain eating and drinking uh, such things as they give you. Okay, he's not talking about anything that you shouldn't be drinking. Um, uh, hello. Okay. For the labor is worth his hire. Go not from house to house uh, and into whatsoever city you enter uh, and they receive you. Eat such things as is sat before you. We talk about that another day. And he said this, heal the sick. Here's what he did. He sent his laborers. He sent his followers, sent his followers. He sent men and for our day. He sent women and he sent them to do what? To heal the sick. Here's what he did. He sent them to, to heal the sick. Now, whether that sickness is an emotional sickness, whether that sickness is a physical sickness, whether that sickness is a psychological sickness, he sent them to heal the sick. Can I tell you this? Can I tell you this? As we as Christ followers, as born again believers, glory to God, as New Testament believers and followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, can I tell you that the sick are still being healed? Glory to God. Can I tell you that those that are physically sick are still being healed? Those that are emotional sick or emotional wounded, that they're still being healed? Can I tell you that those that have been spiritually wounded, those that have been hurt in their heart, they are still being, being healed? Those that have some sort of psychological impact or, or have been wounded some sort of way, can I tell you that they are still being healed? That word healed in the, in the Greek is a word that means to, to cure, to heal, or to make whole. That word means to cure, to heal, or or to be made whole. Let's talk about the physical aspect first, okay? And I'll use myself as an example. I can remember in 1995, leaving Mannheim, Germany, I was in the military and i am uh, been reassigned to, at the time, to San Antonio, Texas. And um, oh my goodness, can I tell you that San Antonio was an oasis coming from Germany. Germany was beautiful, brother Enos, sister Enos, loved it to death. But going to San Antonio, San Antonio was like an oasis for me. I needed to re be recovered. I met my wife in San Antonio. Hi, Mildred, love you, baby. You know, we've been married 24 years, 23 years, going on 24 years now. But San Antonio was, was an oasis. But I remember being there and, and I didn't know anybody in the church. I didn't, way before I met Mildred and I uh, didn't have many friends at all in the church. I was new to the church, but I can remember I had a physical problem going on and I had went to the doctors literally. Uh, they had did CAT scans, they had did blood cultures, they did all kinds of things. Uh, I, was, I was a serious guinea pig for them and they still could not identify what was going on. They couldn't find the cause of my problem. But, but being new to the area, being new to the church, nobody knew me and I could care less. I needed healing in my body and I'll never forget that night. I think it was Sunday morning and Sunday night. But I went to, that, to the altar when the altar was open. Can I tell you that it was so awkward because I was the only one that went to the altar that night. Now, typically, you know, I'm looking around. Okay, somebody joined me up here. I'm here by myself. I'm new to the church, but I stood there. I stood there, lifted my hands and just, God, I need something. God, I need something. I need a healing. And the, the pastor of that church, Pastor Tim Wallace, came and laid hands upon me. A couple other elders, Bishop Jackson, may have surrounded me and they prayed. And can I tell you that that problem dissipated that day? I never had it again. I've never been back to the doctors for it again, and that problem ceased at that moment because that was a physical healing that God allowed me to experience in my body. Yes, I have faith for it. Yes, I believe for it. And quite honest with you, I was desperate for it. I wanted God to heal me, and God did. I remember my wife some, some years ago, Mildred and I, when we were living in New Jersey, 
we had a friend of ours that was uh, in a car accident and um, <clears throat> man, she was, she, it was a bad car accident. I mean, she um, was, you know, sitting on pillows, back restraints, just the whole nine yards. And, and I had left, um, I guess, prior to going over there, my wife and I to that, to her house, her and her husband's house, I had left and I went to a meat conference, which is a week long prayer and fasting. And uh, I think at the name of the church is Antioch, Bishop Chester Wright's there in, in Maryland. I uh, went there for a week of prayer and fasting, and, and there was a boldness that came upon me. We've seen miracles, deliverance. There were so, I mean, giants in the faith that were ministering down there that, that was a real blessing. Came back, and I said, Mildred, I said, let's go pray for her. And I called her name, Sister Paula Keontae. I said, let's go pray for her. And she says, well, you know, my wife was a little, little reluctant, but she says, if that's what God wants to do, let's, let's call ahead and let them know we're coming by after service. So we went by after service and, and you know, she made her way to the, to the living room. And, and I said, I want to pray for you that God will heal you. I believe that the Lord will heal you. And that's exactly what I said. And we begin to pray and we prayed. And I asked this question. I said, is the pain still there? She said, yes. I said, let's pray again. And we prayed that second time, glory. Hey, Bo Shaha. And I mean to tell you right now, the Lord instantly healed her on the spot. God deliver, delivered her instantly on the spot. And that sister began to take off worshiping and shouting around their little living room in the apartment where they live. Why? Because when we're living a kingdom life and we're walking with God, there is an authority that God works through us as his followers, as his laborers, as those that have faith in him. Why? Because he sent us to heal. He sent us to cure. And he sent us to, to make whole, to heal the sick. And here's what he went on to say in scripture. He says, and therein, and say unto them, the kingdom, here's what he said, and say unto them, the kingdom of God is nigh unto you. The kingdom of God is nigh unto you. Can I tell you this? And I know the, you know this, this is common knowledge, but as followers of Christ, he deserves all of our worship. He deserves all of our praise. He deserves to be exalted. The Bible tells us to clap your hands, all you people, and make a joyful noise unto the Lord. It tells us to praise him in the temple, praise him at the end. It tells us to shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. Glory to God, my Lord. Don't you know the Lord is worthy of all of our praises? He's worthy of all of our praises. My Lord, now that's what, that's what we give to him. That's what we give to him. But then when we're ministering, when we're operating in the the authority of the kingdom, when we're operating in the authority of the name of Jesus Christ and we're fulfilling his calling, when the sick are being healed, when blinded eyes are being opened, this is not a cliche. This is not a cliche. I remember oftentimes pastor as he ministers here, telling us of the miracles that he's experienced and that he has seen and ministering throughout our nation and throughout the world. I'm here to tell you right now that God is the same yesterday. Go ahead and finish that statement for me. Go ahead and finish that statement for me. God is the same yesterday, today, and when? And forevermore. Meaning that God does not change. What God did for me, God will do for you. What God did for others, he'll do the same thing for you. I wish I knew the rest of that song. But then in Luke chapter, same chapter, down to verse, verse, uh, verse um, 17 through 21, it says this. And the 70 returned again with joy. And he says, why? This is, this is the question. Why they, did they return with joy? Because when they worked, he worked. When they went out and healed the sick, <laughs> when they went out and saw that opportunity to, to touch that life, and they touched that life, he went to work. When, when they went out and saw somebody that was, that was in need of food and they, 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 they ministered to them and, and gave them that food, the Lord went to work. What am I telling you? This is what I'm telling you. When, when we go to work, ha, huh, who glory, I need to be standing right now. <laughs> but when we go to work, he goes to work. Let me say it again. When we go to work, he goes to work. Come on, Chris Taylor, I see you out there in Jonesboro, Arkansas. Ha, huh, my Lord, the labor is not in vain, but when we go to work, he goes to work. How do you know that? How do you know that? People begin to respond to God because of what you are working. People respond to God because what you are teaching. People begin to respond to God because of what you're bringing to their attention of what God had promised them. What did God promise them? God promised them salvation. What else did God promise them? God promised them the outpouring of his spirit. Here, here, here's the thing. When we repent, we are forgiven. When we are baptized, our sins are washed away. 
And after our sins are washed away and we have repented, don't you know God will fill us with his spirit? But I tell you what, it starts with repentance. Why? Because that is a promise. That is a promise. So when we go to work sharing the gospel, he goes to work filling people. When we go to work leading people unto repentance, he goes to work filling them. Glory to God. When we go to work teaching home Bible studies, ministering the gospel, he goes to work delivering them. He goes to work bringing them out of that captivity. He goes to work delivering them from all types of bondages and things that have held them bound. But in order for us to see the work of the kingdom, in order for us to see the operation of the authority of God in our community and in the lives of those that we're reaching for, <laughs> glory, we got to go to work. Somebody shout, we got to go to work. My Lord, we got to go to work. Because when we go to work, <laughs> I see you, Sister Alexis Ponder. When we go to work, he goes to work. When we go to work, he goes to work. Scripture tells us in Mark, Chapter 16, verse 20, it says, And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working. Everybody say, the Lord working. Working with them and confirming his word with signs following them. Can I get deep on you right now? Just allow me to get deep. There's, there's been a, a, a statement, uh, a popular saying within, uh, within the, the, the area of, of ministry within among, within among preachers and, and pastors. And the statement is this right here. You get what you preach. That's the statement, we, we get what we preach. Um, so if we're teaching or if we're preaching uh, or sowing seeds of, of faith in somebody, you have to believe that they're gonna respond to faith. You have to believe it. And you have to believe that they're, they have not been, most have not been as, as, as filtered or as, as culturally associated uh, as some of us that are saved now have. So when you talk about healing and, and faith, they, they do not go through the whole process of a well if, uh, what if. They don't go through that whole process. Faith says he heals them because that's the seed they were sown. That's what they're believing God for, and that's why they are healed. That's why they are healed. If, if it is faith for accomplishing or, or achieving something in the, in the secular, I'm here to tell you right now, the Lord will do it. The Lord will do it. Why? Because that is the seed that was sown. That is the seed that was sown. But he confirmed his word with, with, with signs following. You see the operation of the authority of the kingdom. You see the operation of the authority of the kingdom. Let me share this with you. And, I don't know how much more time I got. Seth is sitting here looking at me and he's saying, man, take your time, take your time. <laughs> he gave me thumbs up. <laughs> but let me share this with you, that the kingdom is not limited to a location and the kingdom is not limited to a color. Ooh, glory. The kingdom is not limited to a location and the kingdom is not limited to, to a color. Some time ago, I'll never forget this, I, was, I used to work as a government contractor for a company, wonderful company out of Maryland, uh, where I taught navigational systems and traveled literally around the world, Germany, Korea, uh, Italy, various places, Hawaii, <laughs> uh, various places. But I remember one trip, I was over in Nuremberg, Germany, and we were teaching soldiers, many of them, um, and I wanted to go to church service over the weekend. We were off, and, and so I went to a, a chapel service, and, didn't know anybody in the place, still didn't know, still don't know anybody in the place. But I sat there and then came a young man and sat in front of me and this young man that uh, you can tell it may have been his first time there and after talking with him after this experience, it was his first time there. And he came in, he had cigarettes rolled up in his sleeve and he unrolled the cigarettes and put them in his pocket. You can tell he had some sort of respect for the house of God, even though he walked in there with him, but he took them out and didn't keep them visible. And, and the way that they ran service that day, they did the altar call at, at the beginning of the church. They invited people to make a decision for salvation at the beginning of the service. And I just felt led, and I asked the young man do, do, if he'd mind if I would pray for him. And I laid my hands on him. He was in the row in front of me. I laid my hands on him and just began to pray and ask God to touch his life and, and to strengthen him. His hands went up in, in seconds, literally, seconds, that brother was speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave the utterance. I was flat out blown away. And I said to myself this, I said, Lord, what did you just do? I'm, I'm there at this chapel for the first time. I don't even know this guy. I never ministered the gospel, never talked to him, never told him about repentance. Laid hands and began to pray and God filled this dude with the Holy Ghost. And I said, I said, we, we got to talk after service. I got to know, do you understand what just happened? And as we begin to talk after service, 
he said he did understand, understood what just happened to him. And come to find out, as we were talking, his father pastored an apostolic Pentecostal church in Virginia. In Virginia. And here it is. I'm living here. We're living here in, in, in Ohio. And I'm all the way over there in Nuremberg, Germany. And I ran into somebody that needed a connection. Somebody that needed to be restored, to be fresh in God. Can I tell you that the kingdom of God does not have, does not, is not limited to or restricted to, restrict to, restricted to a location. It is not. It is not. The Bible tells us in another passage of scripture, and we're going to bring this to a close. In Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 6, a pastor was ministering to us on this on Sunday about a good work. The Bible tells us in verse 6 here, it tells us so. This is Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 6. It says, So built we the wall, and all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof. Here's why. For the people had a mind. The people had a mind. Had a mind to work. The people had a mind to work. Let me say that again. When we go to work, God goes to work. There is a demonstration of the authority of kingdom living in kingdom citizens. There is a demonstration of the authority of kingdom living in kingdom citizens. This is why I'm so encouraged as I, as I see the Kellys and I see little, little Jonathan just progressing so well. That's kingdom authority. When I, when I see my own daughter, Alana, who two years ago was, was diagnosed with, with diabetes. And she said, Dad, I feel that God has healed me. And she made the decision. I couldn't do nothing but back her and say, OK, I believe God with you. She made the decision, Dad, I don't want to take no more insulin. I don't want to take no more pills. And here it is two years later, glory to God. Two years later, healing is in her body. That's kingdom. That's kingdom authority. That's, that's kingdom living. When we operate as a kingdom, when we operate in the authority as citizens of the kingdom of God, as citizens of the Most High, I'm here to tell you right now, there is no telling what God would do when we're living the kingdom life. I pray the blessings of the Lord upon you. I pray that you will experience in abundance, in abundance, kingdom authority. I pray that you will experience in abundance kingdom living because this is what the Lord wants in this day and in this hour, because he's called us to the kingdom for such a time as this. There's healing that's present right now. If you do not know salvation, never experienced salvation, if you have never been baptized, you've never repented of your sins, I invite you to contact us here, contact us here at the church. Contact us here. There are ministers available. We will get in touch with you. We will minister to you, share with you the gospel. If you never made a decision, I want you to know right now, if you're dealing with something, dealing with something, Jesus is your answer. And he will make a way like no other one can because he loves you just that much. Pray with me right now. Father, we thank you for your presence. Thank you for your love. Thank you for allowing us, Father, to experience you tonight, Father. Thank you for allowing us, Father, to hear and to receive of your word. And, Father, we ask your blessings right now, Father. We ask, Father, that, that your authority, Father, be released into every home, that your authority, Father, now be released in our nation, be released in the earth, Father, be released upon every kindred, every color, Father, every tongue, Father. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Father. Let your authority, Father, now be loosed, O God. In this earth, Father, like it has never been loose before, Father. In my community, Father, here in Cincinnati, let it be loose, Father. Let the power of your spirit, Father, saturate our nation, Father. Saturate the White House, Father. Saturate our houses, Father. Here in Ohio, Father, and all those that are viewing this broadcast tonight, Father, saturate their house as well. We thank you, Father, for your love, and we thank you for your authority, and we thank you, Father, for the ability that you have given us to live the kingdom life. God bless you.